Hello everyone, this video is going to uh, discuss visualizing flames or taking pictures of flames using a, a DSLR, a digital single reflective lens camera. We're going to talk about shutter speed, f-stop or aperture settings, ISO. To do this we're going to look at a website page uh, on the firesciencetools.com website for the visualizing flames, for visualizing flames. And so if we look down, we have some dis short discussion and then a lot of pictures. So I'm, you can read the discussion on your own. You can go through the website yourself if you want. But I'm mainly going to talk about the pictures that are included in here. I put them together over the past year. So we want to talk about specifically shutter speed, aperture, and ISO settings. So the first thing we're going to look at is the effect of shutter speed. So if we look at we're going to look at a candle flame and the effect of shutter speed. So if we take a look at this picture, we can see that we have an aperture setting or an f-stop of f.6 and we're using shutter speeds of 1 over 5 seconds, 1 over 60 seconds and we go on up all the way over to 1 over 400 seconds and the effect is to de decrease the amount of light and that is recorded in the image. And so this has a constant ISO, it's 200, I think it says it in the text. But so when we, we can see that we're, we're relatively overexposed at 1 over 5 seconds or 0.2 seconds. 1 over 60 seconds, we're doing pretty good. Uh, we can see the candle and everything, but it's not all white. We can kind of see what's going on. At 1 over 200, we're getting a little dark. We're, we're losing kind of being able to see the, the characteristics of the candle itself. And then as we go more and more and more to lower or faster shutter speed settings, you see less and less of the candle and then only the flame itself. Now on your, on your DSLR it's likely you will get if you set the shutter speed to 200 it is 1 over 200 seconds. That's how you know how fast is shutter speed going? So the larger the number you you choose, the faster your shutter speed is. So it's somewhat counterintuitive. Until you set it to more than a second, if you set it to more than a second, then it'll just say one, two, three, four, five. Usually up to thirty seconds, and then after that, it's a bulb setting where you just hold the shutter down as long as you want. Um, so this is basically a steady state uh, steady state fire. So you can leave your shutter open as long as you want and, and the picture doesn't change much. So once we go to a non-steady state fire, the shutter speed becomes more important because you want to be able to freeze the image. So you need a high shutter speed to freeze the image and we're going to talk about that a little bit more now. But this picture, just to recap, slow shutter speed you get lots of light, fast shutter speed you get less light. So if you want to take a picture of the flame only, you can use a fast shutter speed and if you want to capture the environment around around the candle or around the flame as well, you need a slower shutter speed. Now we can look at a Bunsen burner flame doing the same thing. If we open this, we see the Bunsen burner flame, uh, and, and we have longer seconds. So this is a less luminous flame. So this is a premix flame as opposed to a candle which is a diffusion flame. So in the candle you have a lot of soot producing uh, producing light and in a in a premix blue flame like this is a Bunsen burner you get much less emissions. So your the one over five seconds that we saw was overexposed with the candle is now one of the fastest settings that we use uh, to actually get an image of the premix flame. So if we look at this we have eight seconds to a tenth of a second. So if we look at the eight second uh, exposure, it's eight second image, it's obviously overexposed. But what you'll notice is this, you might think of a Bunsen burner as steady state, but it's really not. Well, at least depending on the flow rate you use, it's often a turbulent, a turbulent premix flame. So the, this inner cone is moving around a lot. So that's why you start seeing this band where you think uh, this might be a flame thickness, but in reality when we get uh, faster settings, this one over 10 seconds, you can see, start to see multiple flame edges appear. And so this is when your, your flame is moving around a lot. And so that just shows if you want to freeze the flame, you need to use a fast shutter speed. But as your emissions, especially premix flames, it's difficult 
to get an image of a rapidly moving premix flame because they produce so little light. So to help with this, we can increase our aperture setting or uh, decrease our f-stop. So the smaller your f-stop, the bigger your aperture. And then we can also increase our ISO. So we're going to talk about those two things and the effect of doing those two things as we go on. So we have ISO is discussed in the in next. We can see once again we use it we use a, a candle which is steady state. So we have a shutter speed of one over three hundred twenty seconds, uh, an f stop of five point six, and we have the ISO setting from two hundred to thirty two hundred. So you can see when we're at two hundred, our our candle is barely visible. We can see our flame, and as we increase the ISO, our the candle becomes more and more visible and the flame becomes brighter and brighter and brighter. The only trouble is we're inducing noise as we increase our ISO. You can see the colors start to shift, especially when we go into the higher ISOs. I'm not completely clear as to the reason of that, but it happens. These were taken using a Nikon D90 uh, with the standard 18 to 105 kind of Um, lens, and I'm not sure what the zoom is. Zoom was on this, but um, anyway. So we have an increasing ISO. You get an increased brightness in your image, and then we'll talk about the increased noise as we go along. But basically, you'll get random hot pixels, and if you take a long exposure, you'll get a lot more noise. These are relatively quick exposures, so you're not it's not too bad. But like if you take a picture of the star, a starry night with the, a high ISO, the stars will show up, but so will a bunch of random other white spots. So you'll get way more uh, white spots that you might think are stars than uh, that are actually there if you do, let's say, a 30 second exposure. I was doing that the other day. I couldn't figure out why the sky was so noisy until I realized my ISO was set high. So I set up an experiment to show the effects of the aperture. So as you, I said, if you increase the size of your aperture, you decrease your f-stop, you're letting in more light. All right? You're opening up this, the, the lens, basically the window in front of your film. But as you, as you open that wider, you shrink your focal plane. In other words, you shrink the distance at which objects can be in focus. So if we look at this this picture here, we have what I did was set up a five candles in a row and then put the camera off at about 15 degrees, let's say, and took a picture where you can see all five camera all five candles and they're one foot apart. So this is a five foot span from here to here. And this is one example where the center candle is in focus and the candle next to that close to the camera is losing focus and the closest camera or the closest candle is obviously out of focus and the same thing happens on the far side where the, the next candle is sort of in focus and the last candle is way out of focus. So you can see this is just a picture of the setup from the top. You have five candles one foot apart. And then if we look at, at this image it is a comparison of uh, of different f-stop settings. So f-stop 5.6 is as large as the lens I was using could go, and f-stop 36 was as small as it could go. So this has the smallest focal um, focal plane, and this has the largest focal plane. But this lets in the most light, and this lets in the least light. So if we look at this, we can see when we're at an f-stop of 5.6, uh, I think that's the image that went with the diagram where our two um, farthest candles are, are largely out of focus, the next two are still out of focus, and the center was in focus. If we go to f-stop of 10, it gets a little bit clearer along the length. 20, we're doing a little bit better, we're now our, the, the one foot away candles from the, from the focal plane are, are pretty well in focus, and the farthest farthest away candles are starting to retain their definition and as we go up to 36 we can see that finally we're starting to get to where the uh, all five candles are pretty well in focus but you'll notice the difference between 
f-stop 5.6 where you can see the candles. You can actually see the candle stalks. And then when we go down to 36, you can only see the flames. There's no there's no hint of a of a candle stalk there. And so as we as we increase, you can see a little bit of the candle at uh, this candle at f of 20, and then it all goes away as you get larger. So that's the effect of the aperture as we and it's it's confusing because f stop you get a a, a smaller f stop you get a larger aperture. And as you get a larger aperture, you get a smaller focal plane. So you want to, you gotta kind of keep it in your mind that way. But that's how the aperture affects how you're going to take a picture. So when you want, let's say you want to take a picture with people in it that are separated by some distance, you're going to have to use a a, a large f-stop. So you're going to need to increase your shutter speed and maybe your ISO as well to get enough light to have the picture show up. So it's all about lighting when you take uh, when you're recording or taking images of, of things. It's all about the lighting. Okay, so then as we go on I made this kind of a table to show the effect of ISO and shutter speed using an f-stop 36 with this candle experiment. So we see we start out with an ISO 200, and as we go from 100, a hundredth of a second to a twenty-fifth of a second, we can see the flames getting brighter. And then, as we increase our ISO, the flame is getting even, or the image is getting brighter and brighter and brighter. So this this bottom corner, we can see the most of the candle, but we're starting to get some discoloration, which I believe is due to the amount that we've increased the ISO. So ISO is basically a amplifier on your on the sensor in your camera. So anyone who's done data acquisition knows if you amplify the signal too much, you you not only in amplify your the data you're collecting, but you also amplify any noise that's in your data acquisition system. And since the sim the sen sen sensor is basically just one uh, big data acquisition unit, you're amplifying any noise that's on the sen sensor, any random voltage spikes or, uh, or other things that happen in there. So if we look at uh, a turbulent, large turbulent flame, let's, this is a propane gas burner, we can see the effect of the shutter speed. So if you use 1 over 60 seconds, we get this just this bright cloud going up the wall. 1 over 125 seconds, you're starting to see a little definition. Then one over a thousand seconds, you're starting to see the individual flamelets uh, hanging out in in the flame column, which is which is pretty cool. So when you see images of just fire, they were taken kind of in this manner, where you turn the shutter speed up real fast, and you can only see the the flame without the surrounding surrounding bits around it. We could also have accomplished this by turn, either turning down our ISO. We would have gotten similar pictures. But if you turn down your ISO, you still get smearing if you have a large, a large shutter speed. And same thing if you close your aperture. Um, you have to run a longer, longer shutter speed, so you still get smearing even though you'll get a darker image. Um, this is another example of shutter speed. It was just we were burning FRPs, they're fiber reinforced polymers. And uh, you can see we had a burner and then it was burning along the wall. And so with one over 20 seconds, you got you could see the wall, but you, you couldn't see the definition of the flame flamelets themselves. And one over 400 seconds, you could start to see the flames more, but you lost seeing the wall. So if you're interested in looking at the experiment, you want a, enough, a long enough shutter speed so you can see all the apparatus. This is a thermocouple, a column of thermocouples and bidirectional probes. And then, if you're interested in looking at the flames itself, then you want a faster shutter speed so the the image doesn't smear and, and light out and overexpose. So we'll talk a little bit about DSLRs. This is getting a little long. You can adjust the shutter speed, ISO, and f-stop in the manual settings. You can also just take the you can set it on automatic and it'll take pictures that are fine, but often the flames will be overexposed. 
And uh, if you want, if you know, lenses are really the expense when it comes to buying these these DSLRs, you buy some body and then you think the body's really expensive. It's like a grand, and then it comes with a lens, and then you start buying more and more lenses. So now I own about I don't know two or three thousand or yeah two or three thousand dollars in lenses, and the body was like I don't know eight hundred dollars or something. So um, it just kind of so you can rent lenses if you don't want to buy them. That being is the point of this line here. Um, you can get metadata. Metadata when you when you take a picture, you get data that'll tell all the settings that it was picked, it was taken at, is in the metadata file of the of the image. It comes with it. You can use MATLAB to get that data. And uh, I I have some code here if you want to look on this website. Uh, this is some about an infrared filter that I don't think worked real well. And there's a there's a video here as well. But oh, stochastic techniques. I'm going to talk all about this and maybe I'll make another video. Okay, I hope you found this useful and have a good day.